Special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Rusberg for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare12 here bringing you another Minecraft Modern Warfare BAFTA build tutorial. In this tool, we'll be going ahead and building the USNS Spearhead. Spearhead is the lead ship of the Spearhead class of expedinary fast transport to be operated by the United States Navy's Military Sea Lift Command. USNS Spearhead was christened on September 17th, 2011. Spearhead, as well as the other ships of her class, are built to be a modular design that allows them to be rapidly refitted with various equipment within a 20,000 square feet bay, depending on the mission at hand. Spearhead is planned for non-combat missions, such as transportation of troops or equipment. So yeah, pretty interesting ship here, and probably one that's going to be a lot lesser known on a lot of your guys' radars. Um, I have actually seen one of these ships in person, which is kind of cool. They're really, honestly, a very ugly ship <laughs> for what they are, to be honest with you. But at the same time, they uh kind of very interesting and a kind of a cool logistical or just kind of auxiliary type ship to throw into your modern navies. Um, so yeah, really cool ship and should be a fun one to add and definitely a very unique one in the sense of um, not really many other ships um, actually serve the role that it does. Um, but before we go ahead and take a look at this build, I do want to go ahead and give special links to Patreon support Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel more you already do, feel free to check out my Patreon page, link is always in my video descriptions, where you can pledge a small amount to the channel every month and in doing so earn a viewer request you're choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel, it's really greatly appreciated, so definitely feel free to check that out. Again, the link for that will always be in the video descriptions. However, with that out covered, let's go ahead and move in and take a look here at Spearhead. So, going ahead and getting started with, we have the front bow of the ship here. It has basically a um, kind of a catamaran type design, or um, I think that's what's considered when you have the two uh, separate hole sections in the water. Uh, it then has the front up here, which just has, again, some of the different equipment and stuff like that for it. Nothing too crazy. As you approach further back, we have the bridge, as well as all the communication equipment, and radars, and all that such located on the bow here. Then on the rear, we have uh, basically this uh, whole area here. Um, and we have our uh, flight deck for the ship as well, for a helicopter, something like that, to land here on the back. And then on the very back stern of the ship here, we have the entrance into what would be uh, the bay. So that's where most of your stuff is going to be stored. And we have an access to a crane and all that kind of stuff, and a deployable ramp here to actually load vehicles and equipment into the ship and all that. So it's a pretty interesting uh, design for a ship. It came out, uh, I guess, as good as you could really ask for for what um, this thing is really, <laughs> what this thing really is. So overall, pretty cool build. And without further ado, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer. All right, guys, moving into our first layer here, we're going ahead and begin with layer one. To go ahead and get started with here, we're going to be placing down a polished blackstone top slab. Now this right here is going to be the portion that's going to be in the water. So this right here will be basically sitting at this level here of the water. The blue concrete here representing that water level. So we're going to have that polished blackstone top slab, and then we're going to place down with our skeleton skull like this coming off it toward the front. We're going to go then go back from this top slab one more, and then if you're on Java, we're going to place down a row of upside down pistons. If you are not on Java and don't have access to a debug stick, which is a tool we will be using later on, then I would recommend going ahead and probably just using uh, slabs going all the way across your polished blackstone. Unfortunately, it's not perfect, but it kind of is the best alternative we really have to what we're doing here with these pistons. And with this row all placed of pistons, and you want to make sure that they are all pointing downwards, you'll have this long row here. And this row in total is going to be a length of 12. We're going to go ahead and place down two more polished blackstone top slabs, then a polished blackstone upside down stair, a narrow top slab, and then a dark oak wood fence gate, which can be opened up toward that top slab. And then right there is going to complete our one row. We're going to go ahead and then build a space of one, two, three over, and we're going to go ahead and do the same row just over here to this side. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of do this a little bit quicker, as I already covered it. Again, same thing, we'll be, we'll be going ahead and using our piston technique here if you do not have, um, you know, access. To those pistons, you'll be using your polished blackstone top slabs most likely as an alternative. And again, it's going to go back all the way until we're in line with that side. We'll delete these blocks up on top here, and we'll then place down our two uh, top slabs back, upside down stair, top slab, and our dark oak fence gate like that. After that's all done, that's all we're going to do for this layer so far. Again, make sure that this is at the proper height in the water because if you don't do that, it's going to sit kind of weird in the water. 
Uh, but once you're good with the height it's sitting in and all that stuff, we're going to be going ahead and moving on up to our next layer, layer number two. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number two. For layer two to start with, we're going to take our stone blocks and place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Stone blocks back, and over here, same thing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, back like that. We're going to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull on the left side, so it's left row and the left row only. And then we want to go ahead and go to our last stone blocks, and we're just going to place down a row of three of stone top slabs across in between them. And then we're just going to go ahead and fill in the whole bottom here with stone top slabs going all the way forward here in the midsection here. So this is going to go all the way up. However, this is going to end a little bit before we get to the very front here, and this is going to end basically on that uh, third row back from the front there. So it's going to end right here, so we should have two blocks sticking out after our middle is full filled in. And once we have that all done, that is basically it for that layer, really simple, easy one to do. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on up to our next layer, which will be uh, layer number three. And actually real quick before we do that for Java players, we're gonna go ahead and real quickly talk about these pistons. At this point in time now, we can go and type in the command slash give at p minecraft colon debug underscore stick. And by pressing enter with this command, you'll get this glowing stick here. What we can do is we can left, left click the piston until we get selected extended false prompt to pop up and we're going to go then right click this all the way down and we can actually get rid of that wood portion of those pistons. It kind of helps a little bit with the shaping here for the bottom of the hull of the ship. So you'll just go ahead and do that for both sides and that's pretty much all you need to do. Pretty simple, easy stuff. Do hold on to the debug stick because we will be using it a little bit later throughout the rest of the build. Anyways though, let's go ahead and move on to our next layer, layer number three. Moving into our next layer here, we have layer number three. For this layer to start, we're going to place down a stone block on top of those right there in the front, and then a light gray stain was painted both sides. We're going to then place down a skeleton skull on both sides here, and then we're going to place down a stone upside down stair after those stairs, or after the skeleton skulls, and then a top slab in between those. We then want to take our stone blocks, we're going to place down a row of five that's going to go all the way across this section here. We're going to go then place down a row of three across. This is going to be then followed up with a light gray wool block on both ends. We're going to go then place down a row of five again of stone all the way across. This row of five is going to have a polished black stone button on both ends. We're going to go then place down another row of five across, then a another row. This here is going to have a polished black stone button on both ends. And we're going to go ahead and repeat that row again, again with this polished black stone button on both sides like that. We then want to place down a blast furnace on both sides, a row of three of stone blocks across the center. Another row of five of stone all the way across, an item frame, and then an iron bar in the item frame, again on both ends. We're going to go and place down another row of five of stone, then another two rows. On these two rows here, we're going to place down two polished black stone buttons on the ends. We're going to go then place down two more rows of five, going all the way across. We're going to go then finish, place down a, um, a uh, blast furnace here, and then our blast furnace here. And one quick thing we are going to go ahead and adjust here is we're actually going to place down a row of gray wool that go across this section here, as well as another row that goes forward there. So we're going to kind of cut into those stone blocks like that, and that'll be kind of helping form our flight deck here. So the next row here is going to be another row of three of gray wool across. This is going to be followed up with a stone block on both ends. This, uh, and then on both ends of the stone blocks here, we're going to have a polished black stone button. We're going to go ahead and place down one and two stone blocks on this side here. And we then want to go ahead and grab ourselves some black concrete. We're going to place down two black concrete blocks like that going to the side here. And then an air stone block like so. We're also going to place down a polished black stone button on both ends of the stone blocks. Then on this uh, section here, we're going to place down an anvil on the right side here. Coming off the anvil, we're going to place down a stone brick wall. And coming off the stone brick wall, we're going to place down a stone brick stair. Now around that stone brick stair on the sides, we're going to place down birchwood signs. And we're going to go ahead and then grab ourselves some iron trapdoors. And we're going to place down one and two iron trapdoors across this space. Then two stone, or sorry, one stone block like that on the side there. Then an anvil on this side. And then a skeleton skull coming off the anvil like that. We're going to go ahead and then grab ourselves an andesite wall. We're going to place it down on top of this skeleton skull here. And then coming off that andesite wall, we're going to go ahead and place down a birchwood uh, fence gate like so, and open it up toward the wall, and then we're going to go ahead and then place down a chain right here. After that, we just want to go ahead and grab some gray carpet, and we're going to place down one, two, three across this space right there. 
After we have that all done, that right there is going to basically wrap up everything we have there for layer 3. And with that, we'll be moved on to our next layer, layer number 4. Alright guys, moving into our next layer here, we have layer 4. For layer 4 to start with, we're going to place down a piston on top of these iron, or those light gray stainless panes. And we're just going to go ahead and place down a row 3 of iron trapdoors across there. We want to go ahead and then place down birchwood signs on the side of these iron trapdoors. And we're going to go ahead and then place down a skeleton skull coming off the side here of those pistons here to both sides. We're also going to go ahead and right click the piston like that to get rid of that wood portion. After that is all done, we want to go ahead and then place down a grindstone that's going to go right here in the center. And then to the sides of that, we're going to place down an iron trap door. And actually, real quick, we're going to hold off on those pistons there and using our debug stick because right behind it, we're going to go ahead and place down a stone upside down stair. Just a quick uh, side note is that if you do or if you are on a different version instead of the stone or the anvils or the sorry the pistons you can go ahead and place down a stone stair instead but again these pistons here are going to be the best block choice. After we have that all done we can go ahead and then use our debug stick there to go ahead and get rid of that wood on those pistons. Continuing on though we're going to go ahead and go behind the grindstone we're going to place down a stone brick block followed by a stone block to both sides and then we're going to place down actually two stone blocks to the sides there. Now on the right side here, we're going to place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 stone blocks back from that frontal row. The other side here is going to be slightly different. We're going to go ahead and go back a little bit less um, than that. So we're going to go, ahead and go back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and we're going to stop at 7. We're going to skip. So after 7, we're going to go and then skip two spaces and then place down another stone block like that. Now, we also want to go ahead and place down a acacia wood boat that's going to go in this section right here. And uh, we'll kind of adjust that a little bit later, but we're going to leave that as is for right now. Now, we're going to go and then take our stone blocks and we're going to go ahead and place down a row that runs through this space here. And again, you may have to finagle this boat a little bit to kind of get it to work here um, so that we can place our stone blocks across like that. And then we can go ahead and kind of push this boat more into place here. And it's meant to kind of represent the lifeboat here on the side. Um, obviously, if you mess with this a little bit, then you can kind of get this to look pretty good. Um, so kind of just finagle it a little bit and, you know, boom, uh, we're pretty much good to go. So with that boat out of the way, we're going to continue on for stone. We can just bring this all the way to the front here, fill the space in like so. Then we're going to go and take our stone and we're just going to go ahead and fill in this space here as well. Just again, all the way to the front here. This uh, next area, we're going to go ahead and grab some gray carpet, and we're going to go ahead and place down one, two, three gray carpet here in the center, and then we're going to go ahead and fill in the rest of this with stone all the way to the front. Now, with that all done on the back here, we're going to go ahead and then take our gray carpet. We're going to place down one, two, three, four, five going across here, and we're going to go ahead and then grab some white carpet and also some birchwood buttons. We're going to place down a white carpet in the center, birchwood button to both sides, white carpet again to both sides, gray carpet in the center, white carpet, and birchwood buttons there on the sides. We're going to then place down one, two, three, gray carpet, one, two, three, and then across here, one, two, three, four, five. We're going to then also place down another row five, or sorry, a row three this time going across that space there. Then we're going to go and take some skeleton skulls and some uh, iron bars. We're going to place down a skeleton skull here and then two end rods over like that to go ahead and create that crane there on the back. After that is all done though, that is going to wrap up everything there is there for layer number four. And with that, we'll probably just go ahead and move into our last final layers. Moving into our final layers here, we have layers 5 through 9. For these layers to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down an end rod that's going to go on top of, or rather, sorry, an iron bar that's going to go on top of this grindstone. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves a daylight detector. We're going to place down a daylight detector behind that. We're going to turn that to the night mode. Then after that daylight detector, we're going to go ahead and take some stone slabs and we're going to place down one and two stone slabs back down the center here. To the sides, we're going to place down one, two, three, one, two, three iron trap doors. Same thing over here on the other side. In this uh, center space here, we're going to go ahead and place down a black stained glass block. And we then want to go ahead and place down a piston to both sides here. An alternative to the piston could either be stone slabs, but probably most likely I would recommend using uh, stone full blocks as an alternative here to the pistons. So it's going to look like this. And then behind this piston, we're going to go back one more and then one out to the sides here. And then in this very middle space, we're going to place down a stone full block. We're also going to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull that's going to come off this piston here going forward. And then on the sides here of the piston, we're going to place down an item frame to both sides. And then we're going to go ahead and place down a black bed in the item frame, which we're going to rotate. And we're going to have the pillow face toward the front there. Then again, for a Java or Java players, we can go ahead and place down a birchwood sign on the side there of that piston. Same thing on both sides there. And that will basically help kind of make that look a little bit nicer. 
Um, again, placing down signs and iframes is only going to be a Java feature. So um, if you are not on Java, you will have to go ahead and just place down the item frame. We're going to go then place down a row of five of pistons all the way across the space here, then a row of three. We're going to go then place down a skull, or rather, sorry, a stone stair on this side here, and then a skeleton skull on top of that stone stair, and then a piston on this side here. We're going to go then place down a stone block in that center space, and then two pistons out to both sides. Then taking our stone slabs, we're going to go ahead and go back from this piston one, two stone slabs, as well as a skeleton skull, or rather actually a iron trap door that's going to be on top of this space here. And then we're going to place down a skeleton skull on top of that iron trap door. Now after that is done, uh, we want to go ahead and also place down one piston that goes back over here on this side, as well as placing down one and two gray carpet, and then we're going to place down one gray carpet here. We're also going to place down a piston on top of this stone block here, and we're going to go and take our item frames and wrap them around those two sides, as well as placing down black beds in the item frames, like so, and then a gray carpet here to the side of that piston. After that is done, we're going to place down a birch fence gate right here, and we're going to go ahead and open this fence gate toward the center. Then on top of those, we're going to place down a skeleton skull. And in between the skeleton skulls, we're going to place down a row of three of end rods. We'll then take our debug stick, we're going to go ahead and right-click that piston and get rid of that wood portion on top there. And then for the rest of the pistons here, we can go ahead and just do the same and get rid of all the wood there for the top and help um, kind of shape our very top roof here of the ship. Once that is all done, we're going to go ahead and then place down a skeleton skull, or rather a birchwood fence post on top of the stone block. And we're going to then place down a end rod to both sides of that. Then on top of it, we're going to place down a skeleton skull. And then lastly, an iron trap door here on the top of that glass block. After that's done on the back section here, we're going to go ahead and then place down a birchwood fence post on top of the stone block, followed by an additional one up. And then we're going to place down a end rod on top of that, and then a skeleton skull on the very top. On the sides of the fences and the end rods, we're going to go ahead and place down an end rod on both sides going up. And then lastly, a birchwood fence gate coming off the skeleton, or rather the end rod here, and then opened up toward the end rod like so. We'll then go ahead and take our debug stick, get rid of the, fix those pistons there. And once you have that all done right there, that is going to complete uh, layers 5 through 9. And with that, my tutorial here for the USNS Spearhead, part of the Spearhead class of Expeditionary Fast Transports. Hope you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put it to good use. As I mentioned, this is kind of a weird kind of off-ball ship. So uh, hopefully you are able to find a cool use for it or something in your bathtub build fleets. Um, with that though, if you guys do end up using this build, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This could be a link from a sound that built into my channel or this video if this does bring social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for your free user for a project you guys are working on, overall enjoy the build, have fun with it, all that fun stuff. Again, a big special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. And as always, feel free to check my Patreon page, link is down in the video description. With that though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary 2 by 4 and I'll see you guys next time.